Well, joining us on the news is Biodun Shomi, political analyst. Glad to have you with us, Mr. Shomi. I'm pleased to be here. All right. Well, discuss with us, if you will. I mean, first of all, the man anointed by the president has emerged as the chairman of the party. Discuss with us, if you will, some of the intrigues you observed as a political analyst as all of this played out. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what we've seen clearly, it's um, the direction in which APC chose to pick his own election officials. They are quite aware of many problems the party has faced and is still facing. And realize that there's no way with all the factions in different states, they will go into an election, you know, to elect the party um, operatives um, without um, having some form of consensus candidates. If they have chosen a direct election or indirect election, that will have created more problems for the party. So I must commend the president. Um, he's been able to um, steer the party clearly in this direction. Since the constitution, the, the, the electoral act provides for consensus uh, candidates. So, therefore, they have done very well to manage their internal crisis. And that is one part of it. The other part is um, the, if you look at the way all the candidates emerge from where they are from, clearly shows that. Um, there are some states that are probably excluded or some zones, you know, even in the south, from bidding for the presidency. You cannot hold certain posts and say, uh, for instance, chairman of the party, and say you want to come from the north again, the presidential candidate. That's not going to happen. Um, I see Southwest better, you know, um, uh, placed, you know, to provide the next presidential candidate, given and the distribution of the post, which they did through consensus. So that may as well uh, be uh, what the president or the ruling party cabals you know, prefer, uh, that look, we rather skill this to ensure that it's only um, more likely the candidates from Southwest will emerge as presidential candidates. That is what has played out. It has reflected clearly in uh, the representation in terms of those who were elected through consensual arrangement, it is clear that um, more likely than not, uh, Southwest is better placed, you know, to provide the next um, presidential candidate. Your guess is as good as mine on who probably would emerge. Uh, but the fact is, they have used the convention to resolve, even though it's on party officials. They have also used it uh, as an indicator, as a pointer to where the presidential candidate is likely going to emerge. Mm. That is what I've seen with this convention. All right. Well, Senator Abdullahi Adamu and other key uh, national leaders were selected uh, based on consensus. Well, Rotimi Amichi, who is one of them, um, one of the key members of the party, says that this will strengthen the party. What are your thoughts concerning? Do you see this threatening, strengthening the party, especially in view of the fact that uh, the other, the other contenders, it took them a long time to play along. Yes, a lot of us feeling went uh, behind the scene, which are not known to many people. Um, for instance. When you look at, uh, many people thought uh, uh, some candidates were the favorites until when the Australian started. And then they started pulling up one by one, one by one. Um, because they are also backing different candidates in that way. And they've seen the body language of the president, which is very, very clear. And they've also looked at some other factors. Who is better pleased, you know? Uh, to manage the situation in a way that they'll be able to retain, you know, the APC will be able to retain uh, the rulership of the country. They have put all these factors into consideration. Uh, there were some of them who were not happy about withdrawing, but they eventually withdrew because the party settled for a consensual arrangement. And therefore, um, they can be seen to be anti that arrangement. And that is why some of them pulled up. But some were genuinely convinced that their candidate would be better placed if they allowed, you know, the, the political, I mean, put in place 
to go through. It does not mean that everybody will be happy, you know, those two pulled out, who failed to pull up. But I can bet you some more trading would have happened behind the scenes. Those would be ministers, promised certain portfolios and all that, the chairman of this or that. All this would have happened behind the scenes if it signals the next election. So this is probably why you can see that even though there's some rank or there's some minus images here and there, but well, given the scale of the problem APC was faced with, um, I would regard this uh, convention as a source um, on their part. They've been able to put a lead on some of the boiling pots uh, in a way that they manage it successfully. Talking about I mean, some of the boiling points. Talking back. about the boiling point, what are the tasks ahead of this new chairman? What, what should his main thrust be? The new chairman is faced with a uh, horrendous task. I don't envy Adam uh, because in the fourth instance, you still have the crisis in the States. Those crises are yet to go. You also have some who will leave the convention totally dissatisfied with what is going on. Um, the fact that they were, um, they had to pull out, whether compelled or pressured or one way or the other, they had to pull out. They probably won't be happy about it. And then the scheming towards who will emerge as the next presidential candidate the team to be better placed. Now, the next, the new chairman, Adamo, has a major task on his lap. How is he going to reconcile all the party um, uh, top notch in different states of the federation with um, grievances? There are some of them who are implacable, you know, they are like implacable fools in uh, inverted corner, you know, who they have sworn heaven and the hearts to ensure that uh, the sitting governor will not come in or they will place the sitting governor. And how do you placate those people? And they have sizable following in their states. You also have a second set of people who are people jostling uh, to either be vice president, they don't mind if the South does not produce the president. And now realizing that their hope has been dashed by this convention, that certainly the president is coming from the South. You have also people within the North who feel one way or the other that uh, they should have been allowed. It should have been kept free and open like what the PDP did. So Adamo has a task on his hand to unite the party, you know, uh, before the presidential um, aspirant um, election. Otherwise, um, the party will face a major problem. Um, hopefully, one is expecting, hoping that uh, there will be people this, you know, uh, leaving the party for some other parties because of their failed aspirations. But so far, they have managed the whole thing very well. What Adamu needs to do now is to pick up from where uh, my Malabuni stopped, you know, with um, his um, reconciliation committee, and look for another way to appease the aggrieved members in different states. I mean, you're looking at... Sanfara has a major problem. It's not only Sanfara. You have uh, in um, Kano State, you have Chekau and Ganduje issue. You know, go, you have... Um, Amosu, Dakwabiotu, you know, in different, in uh, Oshun, you have uh, Aragwe Shola and um, Uyetola, and these are major, major political actors. So they need, you know, the Adamu needs to look for a formula to reconcile people in different states with a view to ensure that APC remains united even after having uh, nominated the presidential candidate. Yeah, now that you've mentioned the presidential candidacy, the River State Governor, Anisa Mwike, has declared for that seat. How does that hit you? Oh, yeah. Mwike, Mwike is right. <laughs> to be frank with you, don't forget that Mwike was one of the 17 Central governors that met in Nasaba, Delta State, that declared that the next presidential aspirant, uh, candidate, the, the next president must come from the South. And they meant well. They made that declaration at a point in time when the country was facing major challenges left and right, not only from bandits, from Boko Haram, you have the Ibo problem, you have um, the uh, you know, the Kanus problem here and there. So and they felt that the best way to unite the country is to give everybody a sense of belonging, a sense of uh, um, ownership, a sense of being stakeholders in their own economy, 
And uh, the two behind decision at that point in time that the next president should come from the South. And obviously, um, I would not expect Wipe to do less within the PDP. I expect him to, to, to be a champion, and I'm not disappointed he has been championing that cause. Uh, he's noted for his own commitment to his own beliefs, and, uh, and I, I fancy him for that. He's a fighter, and he's been making the point very clear that no matter who's us is God, the next president must come from the South. The argument being pushed by certain elements within the PDP uh, from the North that um, the president, uh, the, the, the past president produced by PDP were from the South. That is, they were referring to Ambassador and um, um, Jonathan. Um, we're not old water. It's about, you know, uh, representation, geographical representation, not party representation. And that is the point which PK is trying to make. And I think he's correct. He's right to do that. It's in line with the spirit of the agreement uh, made and the declaration made, you know, at Asaba by the 17 governors. Now, politics should majorly be a political, uh, a popularity contest, you know. Um, let's feel the pulse of the people, the electorate themselves. How prepared do you, would you say Nigerians are for this coming election? How prepared are Nigerians? Do you see Nigerians coming out in mass? Do you see them seeing this as a game changer for the country? Yes. Um, democracy is a game of numbers and it's also a game of involvement. Because you can have low turnout in an election, skewing the results of that election and depriving it of uh, the uh, legitimacy that it's supposed to have. What some people would term as democratic deficit. But I think we have had that in the past, but I think it's going to change now for two reasons. One, there's an increasing consciousness amongst the youths in the country that they need to engage with the political process you know, with a view to be able to change and direct, you know, um, uh, events, you know, that shape events, you know, that will affect their lives. You have that one angle. The second angle is uh, the transmission of results um, by electronic means. In the past, people believed that the results will just be written, their votes won't count and all that. And you have so many people totally disengaged with the political process. But now, with the approval of um, the electronic transmission of results, apart from the gains that, that INEC will make in terms of reducing its costs, you know, in transmitting results, you know, collating it from world, local government, state, you know, up to national level, you know, you can easily transmit from world, and that will cut off all the other different layers. You know, they will make a lot of savings in there. Apart from that, electoral savings, you have a situation where many more Nigerians will believe in the process because once the result has been declared at the world level and transmitted, you know, and uh, that becomes um, final. So once you see that process, and many youths are so conscious of that, many Nigerians are happy that we are not going to have electoral, uh, electronic transmission of results. So I expect that more and more Nigerians will get engaged with the process we we'll probably will see my own projection, uh, the highest number of Nigerians that will engage with the political process, uh, the electoral process, um, higher than uh, probably uh, 1979. You know, that is likely going to happen in percentage terms because uh, most people are so well conscious of what needs to be done in the country and more of the youths are coming out. You also have women who are coming out. More women are coming out, you know, to challenge for political offices see? because women are highly underrepresented and uh, we kept ignoring this vital sector, you know, the, 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 the gender sector uh, in terms of representation. Uh, it's Nigerian politics is more male dominated. But with increasing women agitation and participation in the process, you are likely going to have more people, you know, voting in the next election, in the 2023 election, than the previous election. In fact, down the 1979 election. No, oh, thank you so much, Mr. Biodu Shomi, uh, for your time and insight. You. Uh, Biodu Shomi is a political analyst who's joined us to take a look at the uh, convention just recently held by the All Progressive Congress.
please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.